Good morning, sons. I'm feeling hot. Are you feeling hot? No. Okay. <laughs> the worship was awesome today. It was really good. Yeah, sons are hot. Okay. Um, I love the testimonies today. Uh, Sunil's testimony, Pooja's testimony. You know, the son is the solution for all the problems around you. You are the solution. Now, I like what he said. He told that same lady who's staying with that husband who's never seen life. But imagine it was her hand that she put on him and things changed. So where did it come from? It was always in her. But she was sleeping and all he did was just wake her up. And now that same resurrection life that is in him, that is in her, began to flow out of her. And I told you, even last time when we were talking about application, Geetu was sharing about relationships, uh, you know, righteousness, you could have heard that same person be a certain way and you can get so used to it and then suddenly that same person changes is because you're no more in the she came out of being a, a mouse to the place of being a lion I told you in every area in your household wherever the son whoever is the son first it could be a small child but he is the head and the son, it's very important that you don't forget that you're lion. And you have to take your position. I remember when I got saved, I was the daughter. My dad was there, my mom was there, all. I was the youngest. But the son is the head. And the minute I took my position as lion king, because you are like the father there, they'll all come in. And one thing I told you everyone has to not do is close your mouth. You have to be very bold. So she was bold to speak and now the father always supports the truth. The whole kingdom backed her up and her husband changed. The kingdom of God and your father is very real. Everything changes to you. Okay? So can I have that board? Today we're going to talk about inheritance. There's so much inheritance. We can't cover everything. I want you to yourself go and look into the word, but we're going to take some of it, okay, and um, just go. So remember what we talked about? I want to bring, this whole year is going to be about single-mindedness, this whole year, getting you on one side, okay, because everything flows from single-mindedness, okay, too long you got saved, what part of you got saved? Your spirit got saved, but your soul has been double-minded in Adam. So that's why you never saw the life. And all Sunil's testimony represents somebody just becoming single-minded now and now suddenly that life flowing in. Okay, so quick recap of what we've been doing. Are we in the first Adam? There are two Adams in this world. There is the first Adam and then once you got born again, you've come into the second Adam. What is the opposite of sin? What is the opposite of sin? Righteousness. Because the first Adam sinned, what was the result of it? Death. Is my mic echoing? Like there's a buffer, reverb or whatever you call it. The first Adam sinned, so because of sin, death came in. Okay? And who rules in this realm? It says Satan, the prince of air, rooms, rules in the realm of where Adam lives. That's why it says, before you came to Christ, you were like that, children of wrath. Ruled by all of these lusts, everything, you ruled by a different father. Your Satan is king. And then one day you heard about Jesus, he pulled you out, put you in, you got a new seed. There are two seeds. One seed got corrupted, death came in. Now you got born again of the new seed. So he is righteous. He became sin to make you righteous. So he is righteous. You know, the quality of righteousness is only associated with God. God. No one else. Jesus said, no one is good except God. The quality of righteousness, because righteousness means there's no sin. And imagine now you have that righteousness. What does that make you? Another God. You cannot be righteous and not be, you cannot be holy and not be God's. It's something you're understanding. It's not just words you're speaking. Because that attribute is only referred to gods. No one else can be. 
so now you're born of you're righteous and because you're righteous just the way because you had sin sinners the result of every area in your life there was expectation of death means jo bhi karna hai but at the end result there is death now because you're born righteous is not something you do and why were we born because a new seed came in me and i was born righteous the seed of righteousness and so that's why it says in every area you are justified you have justification to have life that means your end result i don't know i don't care what you are doing everything turns out for life you have only one fruit get used to it it is life even your mistakes turn out to be good life and we are fathered it's a rest now everything flows from being single minded that means the communion that we had every time you're having it every sunday now we're going to know that you're not in the first adam the reason why communion is blood body so that you remember it's second seed not first seed second seed so i'm born of second adam so first is adam jat mankind human kind i love in tpt i was reading uh colossians i don't know which verse that was it says that he became human to con human form to con mankind form to make you god form son form so one is human and then one is god son of god is god if you are holy there's only one that is holy holy means without sin it has the nature of god righteous nature of god and imagine you have been given that that makes you another god he is the greater one in you but you are that that's why we have the divine nature that's why can gods have any death they will have life if a problem comes to anyone's ears comes to god's ears can it go anywhere else he is meant to fix it he saw it what is your verdict righteous judgment he fixes it whatever you say will be done on this side my words are spirit and they are life they will do what they were supposed to do and on this side you are lion on this side you are slave slaves don't inherit anything on this side i'm lion lion king lion doesn't ask he just goes and makes his territory that means that's why i always say first you decide do you want it then all of creation will submit to that desire is because the sun wants it the sun has desired it you are so so powerful okay so let's get into the inheritance i'm just going to read certain things it's going to come alive to you so you're a new creation born of the new seed single minded and why do you believe it louder because because it is the truth you believe the word because it is the truth you don't believe to check it till you keep checking it you will not see inheritance because you're waiting for flesh to tell you who you are sons believe the word because it is the truth you live it by faith i take this is because it's the truth now everything looks like it's not it's not i'm not going to go by what i see what i feel and then everything begins to submit to that truth okay john 10:10 the thief comes only to still kill kill and destroy i have come i have come second seed that they may have life and have it to the fullness of life in every area i love sudhir's testimony because it shows somebody who got so used to something imagine maybe for 20 years and then suddenly you see change get used to it you can be in an area for so long that you've become one with that and so familiar with it that you don't even know what it looks like to have to shift but if you heard this word right now it's shift shift time 
okay two becoming one what part of you is becoming one your mind is getting renewed it says renew your mind so that you are transformed do not be conformed to this world that means to this realm but be transformed that word transformed is transfigured how did jesus get transfigured in what area was he transfigured by the renewing of your mind what area was he transfigured physically they saw him physically you think they are looking with spiritual eyes jesus standing on the mount and suddenly he became like nirma ad white clothes all shining bright and they could physically see him white and they knew that he's god so it says do not be conformed to this world but be transfigured that means in the natural you'll see something your situations will start changing your body will start changing by the renewing of your mind to what to the new seed to the new adam so how will you see all things to becoming one your mind is coming on this side till it's double minded you got spirit got saved but you for your whole life you've lived here so you never saw the blessings of god you you thought like all the promises of god says it he fixes some he doesn't fix some he is good to me one day he is not good to me one day you look at other people's life and now you have changed the image of your father is because through experiences but see the truth is unless you are single minded about your origin to becoming one it is not coming in your life so what is happening slowly slowly you are coming into from one realm into other and now you're resting here and now by default everything is coming into your life say i'm single minded that i'm god jat proverbs 4:18 for online sons god kind god nature proverbs 4:18 the path of the righteous is like the morning sun shining ever brighter till the full light of day have you seen the morning sun i like that i like that it refers to the morning sun not the evening obviously not because evening goes towards death <laughs> means it's going lesser and lesser and lesser light and black that's how it is here but the morning sun you go out i underestimated the sun yesterday i went i sat outside because i bombay weather is so beautiful i want to sit in the sun and so the morning sun it became 3 o'clock my whole back was black just different color all together and the morning sun it just goes from beautiful to more 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 imagine it saying that in your life in righteousness god will always give you there'll always be increasing glory in your life like you got a testimony but now there's greater testimony and i'm going to show you greater things in that so i came to give you life and then he just didn't stop there he could have just said i've come to give you life no but life in abundance in fullness that means in every area your life get excited they're going to see more life in every area more of his goodness in your life proverbs 10:2 ill gotten treasures have no lasting value but righteousness delivers from death so what delivers from death sickness disease poverty broken marriages divorce if you've had divorces it's okay it's under the blood now but here in righteousness there is no death even in your marriages expect to see the goodness of god righteousness delivers from death the lord does not let who go hungry the righteous go hungry you will never be begging or borrowing because righteousness leads to life so people say here oh i read it says the bible says christians can't go hungry i i remember someone saying this you know but how i have no food and all and uh, in my earlier years and then i read that it says the righteous will never go hungry you have to know you're on the other side because all of the kingdom is flowing through righteousness consciousness sonship okay <clears throat> blessings crown the head of the you're like a magnet for all of the inheritance of god on the head of the that's you say that's me 
the mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life not death of life you are not doing righteousness you were born the seed that is in you is a righteous seed because jesus is righteous and so everything produces after the seed that's why it's not in the flesh your identity and my identity of who we are is not fleshly fleshly means you have to do something to get something we were born righteous that's why my thoughts not what i'm thinking if i think what i'm thinking my god they're like completely dead but because i'm born righteous it says the thoughts of the righteous are righteous <laughs> thank god i'm not looking at me thank you i everything about me is the seed after the seed okay the labor of the righteous so whatever you all are doing investments you all are doing some putting your word into something your work hands to something the labor of the righteous leads to life you did a goof up hebron shared a couple of weeks ago a testimony about his boss where he did something wrong i did something wrong majorly wrong but the labor of the righteous leads to life your end result is justification for life because thank god father it's not by my flesh my inheritance it's by the seed and yeah i goofed it up but i thank you that my expectation is because i was born this the end result for me is life i'm on the other side okay the fear of the wicked will come upon him the desire of the righteous will be granted i love the other one that says the hope of the righteous will be gladness or end in end in what is your hope right now for whatever the hope of the righteous that's what sunil did to her her hope was like oh my husband should let me go to church maybe he should come he's got this depression for so many years why oh, laid hands the hope of the righteous ends in at the end of it what is she doing celebrating hope of the righteous ends in celebration righteousness delivers from what delivers from death righteousness so what are we doing in beloved getting you established in righteousness this whole year we're only going to do one thing just you're there <laughs> you're on the other side now we've decided we're going to get a big cross here the father will wonder <laughs> the christmas tree is gone <laughs> now there's a the reason i'm going to get a cross so they don't think we're a cult <laughs> at least some uh, representation for an unbeliever coming in so he sees the cross you know this is like church but the reason we are doing it primarily is to give you uh, an impression always in your heart that i'm going to say before and after adam second adam first seed screwed up second seed so everything is born after the seed is the seed believing every day to produce is the seed saying i am mango i am mango waking up i am mango i will only produce mangoes i am yellow color is it doing that the seed is just put in the ground and you go to sleep are you prophesying over the seed are you speaking life into that seed the seed will do what it's supposed to do apart from whether you believe or don't believe because everything is in the seed that seed will produce mangoes because it was born to produce mangoes your seed in you is christ is life go to sleep the end result you just know that you are here this seed that's it that's all that god wants you to remember do this in remembrance of me the communion that you are this seed and that seed will automatically produce life goku shital didn't know she lost her wallet but she knows she is the seed <laughs> i think that's getting conditioned in her so the wallet also comes back then she's like are when did it get lost i didn't even know you you'll start seeing by the very things that are happening around you what manner of seed are you what manner of man is this that he speaks to the storm and it stills that's who you are okay see this <clears throat> the righteous is delivered from trouble who is delivered righteous is delivered from trouble but through knowledge the righteous will be delivered so how do we get delivered i told you the holy spirit first reveals truth 
now you see it now through truth the righteous is delivered that's why all we are doing here is just presenting truth to you and now the truth you're receiving you're not trying to become truth truth is something like the mango seed it is born of who you are that's why even me when i go to sleep i'm not trying to be a son every time i go to sleep i know thank you i was born one and the reason i'll have this victory is not because i'm quoting a scripture because i was born and the truth is that the new seed that is in me it's who i am it's a law it's like life that is who i am that is who you are life giving how many were there for the wednesday bible study we took the i ams and we went with the i am every scripture of the i am goes back to one i am life i am life so what does life look like in health you can't fall sick what does life look like in the things around you i can't lose anything what does life look like in uh finances whatever i touch my hands to do will prosper so what the father has done just amplified all of i am life what does life look like in all areas that's what that word is i am life because in life there is no death what does life look like for your children they can't go anywhere they are all with you here so relax because you are life okay see this he who sows righteousness will have a sure reward as righteousness leads to life okay that's why jesus had to become sin to make you first righteous only after he became righteous because righteousness gives you life the fruit of righteousness is life that's why it says if the spirit of him who raised christ from the dead dwells in you it says the spirit of righteousness then he will give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit because righteousness leads to life is the spirit of righteousness in you say i am understanding yeah now this is not scripture 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 this is revelation i am life so after some time you are not quoting i am healed are i am life it means i can't fall sick it means i am the healed because i am life okay see this <clears throat> the posterity that word posterity i didn't understand only posterity then i googled it children of the righteous will be so whose children are delivered righteous why because you're fathered the whole kingdom is backing you up where will your kid go surround everywhere i remember before my brother came in the lord he used to wonder he used to get people who are not saved to work with him and then like a week would go and they get saved and then they're going to this church that i was going to are right? what happened to you you're going also to that my sister's church is because he couldn't escape is because righteousness is in the house bhag ke kahan pe jayega <laughs> where will you run and go relax the whole kingdom backs the sun and the father is frustrated to see some lost when i say lost is that you cannot receive your inheritance is because all inheritance is not coming through slave mind it is coming there's a, the kingdom works in a certain way it's coming to the mind of a son that's why it says let this mind be in you that did not consider it robbery to be equal with god that is your mind the mind of christ okay see this <clears throat> he who trust in his riches will fall but the righteous will flourish like foliage leaves in spring have you seen one leaf in spring it just multiplies ever increasing the fruit of righteous is a tree of life there are two trees tree of knowledge of good and evil but we are not part of that we are part of tree of life the tree of life will give one fruit the tree of knowledge of good and evil also gives one fruit death but tree of life gives one fruit life you are on the other side you have only one fruit in your life get used to it why not something i did not something i have to wake up every morning and convince i was born this if i'm in christ i was born life my fruit is life okay the thoughts of the righteous are right 
Don't let the devil mess with you. When all crappy thoughts are coming, thank you, these are not my thoughts. <laughs> because my thoughts are righteous. Like father, like son. I rest. The wicked are overthrown and are no more, but the house of the righteous will stand. Your house will stand. Because it's the house of the sun. If you get on a plane, that plane can't go down. Why? Because God is on that plane. Can't go down. If you're in the company, that company is going to prosper. Because God has joined that company. That's who you are. The righteous, I love this, the righteous should choose his friends carefully. Hey, Jesus chose who he was hanging out with. And then when he went on the mount, he still sanctified it to three people. Then he chose Paul, took him separately to Arabia, or however you pronounce that, and Arabia, and then gave him the revelation of Christ in you. Not these disciples, but that one. Because these disciples hung around with him in the flesh. But this one, Christ in me, the revelation of sonship, he needed to give it to someone new. So he took him. Righteousness, hey, choose your friends carefully. I choose who I hang out with. I just don't choose. I see if I can be a life-giving spirit. If not, I sanctify. Are you sleeping, mom? We sanctify. Say, I choose my friends. Do you know that there could be friends that you've had from a young age and they may have been very good friends. They were there for you and that's very good. But you don't make decisions by your friends. Especially when you come into righteousness and sonship, you have to cut off. And then he will take you to a place where maybe at some point they were always giving you life, but now you will end up giving life to them. Uh, but they can keep you there from that place of being a life-giving spirit because they have always been the ones and will keep you from growing. That's why at some point you'll have to just let them go if they don't see it and trust the father that he's adding new because the father never subtracts. He adds new, especially even when beloved began. <clears throat> I told you, I had different friend circle at that time. But when beloved began and I knew that they weren't coming along, I had to take that step of faith and just go with, without anybody. And if my earlier sons are here, they'll know that. And I just took that step of faith and God added new. Rishi came along, Jigar came along, Geetu was here, everyone, like everything just changed and you had to go along and what a place we are at right now. And this is because you are growing and what the Lord is doing in you. The righteous choose your friends carefully. Okay? If they don't see the light of sonship, separate. It's okay. You can be high, hello, but you don't have to marry them anymore. You can go ahead. What I mean is, it can be within girl, girl, or boy, boy. It just means that you're not there for the kind of association that you had with them before. Okay? In the way of righteousness is life, and in its pathway there is no death. You know, these are laws, because righteousness means no sin. So in its path, there can't be death. It's a law. It's like two magnets opposite poles. Can they join the north and the south? Can it? It's like that. If you're righteous, you can't see death. But if you think you're a sinner, death. You're righteous because you were born righteous. They're opposites. That's why in your path there is no death. Okay. The righteous eats to the satisfying of his soul. You know, I started, uh, I'll share that testimony. I'm still waiting. A month more and then PP has an awesome testimony to share with you. <laughs> okay, let me proceed. In the house of the righteous, there is much treasure. It says wealth. In the house of the righteous, there is, you'll never see the righteous begging. In the house of the righteous, there is much treasure. Righteousness leads to prosperity. You sit here, you come under one tree, and then you tell me how you're not getting prosperous. It's because it's a law. You can't help it. You don't want anything to do with the money. Give it to us. Because early sons want Starbucks coffee in the morning. <laughs> I was like, how can we budget this in beloved, you know, they want Starbucks coffee. <laughs> but we will consider. Uh, see this. The heart of the righteous studies 
how to answer. I loved hearing this yesterday. The heart of the righteous studies how to answer. That means think before you are speaking. How I'm going to answer, not just attack. The heart of the righteous studies how to answer. I like this. He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. He who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. What, is, what are you ruling over? Your spirit, your soul man. That means in all things, before that, now I think like, oh, why am I thinking these thoughts? But I'm here. I don't care. I don't care what thoughts are going on. I have made a decision about who I am. Believing is a decision. So feelings will come. Thoughts will come. But tell yourself, thank God I'm not going by my thoughts and my feelings. It's a decision I made and it's a decision based on the truth that I'm from the other seed. And if I'm from the other seed, then my result is life. Yes? Say yes. Okay. <clears throat> a man who has friends must himself be friendly. I just put this here because I liked it in Proverbs. Because I have so many people who tell me in church, this one didn't say hi, that one didn't say hi. And I left the church because you didn't say hi and no one is giving love. What does it say here? He who has friends must himself first be so if you're not, no one is talking to you, what does it mean? It's because you have not gone and said hi to somebody. If so, if you say that no, I have no friends, it's because you yourself are not friendly. If you're sitting in one chair and want, want everyone else to come, life-giving spirit means get off your chair, stop making it warm and go and shake someone else's hand. Because Jesus, if you have the nature, which is true, you are a life-giving spirit, you'll be so fixing other people's problems and you'll have so many friends, you won't be able to keep them away. That's why we have to shut. I say every call I get, I don't do personal ministry. Please come on Zoom. I have to do that. It's because if you're a life-giving, if you're fixing, come on, you're a son. If you go around fixing, you tell me how you're not going to have any friends. If you're sucking, you want others to fix you, then you're there. He who has friends must first himself be friendly. Okay? The righteous man walks in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. Relax, mothers, fathers. Your children are blessed is because it is your inheritance. Okay? He who follows righteousness and mercy finds life, righteousness and honor. Honor comes because you are righteous. The righteous is delivered from trouble. The knowledge, did I read this? No. But through knowledge, the righteous will be delivered. That's what we're doing with you. He who sows righteousness will have a sure reward as righteousness leads to life. Sin consciousness will lead to death. Why has the church been seeing so much of death? It's because the church has confused all the children of God. They got saved. The spirit is there. But their soul never got saved. It was still in Adam. So they never saw life. So problems happen. Death happens. Sickness, normal. Divorce, normal. Relationships up and down, normal. I get cold. You get cold. We all get cold together. Let's have flu medicine. Normal. Living like Adam's. We'll all get saved, but no difference. You want to see the difference, transfiguration in your physical body, in your situations, your soul is getting saved. It's coming on this side. So one part of you is here, here, then all, all, all. One mind, boom. Everything goes out. Okay? It's easy to receive. <clears throat> I think I've, I, I, I did read this. Wait. Okay, the righteous man, yeah, he who follows, yeah, the wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. Why didn't she see victory in her life all these years? Could, could Sunil's friend have seen victory in her life? No, she could have. Was she bold? The righteous are as bold as a lion. Don't get scared. You are not alone. Jesus said, don't you know, he told Peter when Peter cut that ear off, if I call the whole battalion of heaven and angels will come 
they are all working for the sun. You are not alone. The whole kingdom is backing your mouth open. Kuch nahi hoega. Okay, I'm just saying stand your whole righteousness. The kingdom is very serious. The father is very serious about you. He wants you to be very serious and don't be just play. When I go in the morning tomorrow, I'm Adam. No, he wants to be very serious about who you are. Second seed, the cross of Christ is real. And so are you and what you've become. No more double mindedness. A son is single minded about his seed, his origin, his birth, that I was born something. And now everything comes to tell you no, 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 no. And then you can shut all those thoughts down, say, I'm not trying to make this happen. It's not by my thinking and me convincing myself. I thank you, it is the truth. And this is by birth. I can't do anything about it, anyways. Too bad I believed 2000 years ago. Or whenever you believe. That's it. Go to sleep knowing it's by birth, your sonship. <clears throat> when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. The memory of the righteous is blessed. God is able to take all your crap memories, delete them and give you one memory that wipes out all those stupid memories. That suddenly now you just behold one. It says, Joseph says, that all my anguish, everything has gone away. All my memories, when he saw his two kids born. It was like, now I've forgotten my toil of my father's house. One, everything changed. Imagine one day, everything changed for Joseph. Okay? For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing shall he withhold from those who walk blameless. Those are righteous. Will he withhold anything good from you? Because the father is good. You know, I love it. We were singing that song today. He is good. Do you know he is good? Even when Adam messed up, he ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And now death came in. And it says, the next verse says that now, oh, they should not eat the tree of life because they'll become like us, knowing good and evil. So what the devil did, sort of like he twisted the word. But he actually spoke half truth. Because God is knowing good and evil. But he chooses to be good to us. That's why even after the mess up, he gave the offerings. Why the offerings? Why the blood offerings? Jesus says when Peter or whoever wanted to call down judgment from heaven, he's saying, you've not understood my heart. I desired mercy. To give mercy. That means he wanted to be good to Adam still. The whole of mankind. He wanted to be good, so the offerings, the blood offerings. Because God is good to you okay the lions may grow weak and hungry but those who seek the lord shall lack no good thing for surely O lord you bless the righteous you surround them with your favor as with a shield the righteous will inherit the land god is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things at all times having all that you need you will abound in every good work. I'm going to take Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. You know that word dwells is sits. Sits. That's your now position. You are here. You are sitting in Christ. So now look at your inheritance. Shall abide under the shadow of the Father. I will say of my Father, He is my refuge and my fortress. My Father in Him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler. Means from the trap of someone who is setting traps to catch somebody. Okay? From the perilous pestilence. That means from disease. He will cover me with his feathers and under his wings I shall take refuge. His truth shall be my shield and my buckler. That's like a shield. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence, the disease. The disease, the scary disease. I don't know anything what's going on in my body. I don't know if I wake up one day and I get. No. Sorry, I'm here. Adam has to be very scared. Me, I'm in the other realm. Okay? Nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at my side. 10,000 at my right hand, it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made 
Jesus, who is my refuge, even the Most High, you came in Christ. Now your sitting place, your dwelling, dwelling place, no evil will touch you. It's like you're in the Holy of Holies. No evil can come here. You're in here. Nor, look at this. <clears throat> On which verse am I? 10. Nor shall any plague, disease come near your dwelling, to your household, to your loved ones. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the snake. The young lion and the serpent you shall trample under foot. It says that all principalities' powers have been stripped, stripped, stripped of their power, of their authority. And he's made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them. And all of these principalities and powers are under your feet. When it tells you take on the armor, it does not tell you to fight. It tells you to stand. And then it tells you against the tricks of the devil. So he can trick you into believing that he has power and authority. But he has been stripped. So, breastplate of righteousness, the second Adam, the belt of truth, the sword of the spirit, that means the word, the gospel of peace, the helmet of salvation, it's all talking about you're here. Relax. Just stand. That means don't forget. Okay? Um, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him, I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him, I will deliver him in trouble, I will, deliver, I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Do you know why you will have long life? You can't die. That is the truth of the second Adam. You can live as long as you want. Death came in here. You can cross 100, 200 because righteousness leads to life. You don't believe it? Too bad. Suddenly you'll be 100 and you're like, wow, what is happening? <laughs> I'm going because you've been so programmed in now the second Adam that suddenly now your cells have been changing everything because all the transfiguration is happening in your body through single mindedness. Transformation, transfiguration is happening through single mindedness to becoming one. Okay? Isaiah 54. Hebron's going to take it, so I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'll take Hebron. Hebron is yawning there. No, he's not. He's alive. All your children shall be taught by the some children, one child. Second child, I will teach. <laughs> huh? All means all. That is the inheritance. Your father is not only father to you, he's father over your phone, he's father over your laptop, he's father over your husband, he's father over your child. Imagine in the before I told you Abraham, he lied two, three times sending his wife to another guy. If I was Sarah, like <laughs> you want to slap? But who closed the wombs? Who stood up? The father. Is, and it's called, it says that Abraham was righteous. So righteousness, your rest is that you're not alone. Father is looking over everything. Where can she go? Close. Send her back. You are a dead man if you take her. Father kept her sanctified. Your rest is jow. <laughs> because father is all over your property. Father is all over this rim. Everywhere. You don't want him also, he's there. He is everywhere. Too bad. You're so fathered. Okay? All your children shall be taught by the father. And great shall be the peace of your children. There is peace over your children. Stop getting so anxious about them. Let them go. In righteousness you shall be established, you shall be far from oppression, for you shall not fear, and from terror it shall not come near you. Indeed, they shall 
assemble surely assemble but not because of me whoever assembles against you shall fall for your sake behold i have created the blacksmith who blows the coals in the fire who brings forth an instrument for his work i have created the spoiler to destroy now see this no weapon formed against you shall prosper first of all he has been disarmed the prince of the air every tongue which rises against you in judgment the father will pull it down you shall condemn you know why because it's coming against righteousness it's like a law it's like i told you it's like the two magnets it can't come only it has to fall is because it's like opposite i become righteousness so righteousness can't be hit righteousness can't get hurt because it's in your nature to be righteous righteousness can't be broken okay and every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn this is the heritage means this is the law this is the inheritance of the servants of the lord and their righteousness is from me means he's saying that this is the laws these are the new laws of the new realm that all these things happen by default for you relax no weapon coming against me shall prosper no tongue that is rising up against me can prosper because they're coming against righteousness okay the righteousness is from me amen now let's have hebron <laughs> it's hebron just remember that i have a lot of variations in my name in my office these people still struggle to pronounce my name so yeah you know this uh, morning uh, I w- rishi is in kochi at the moment and uh, yesterday he was shopping somewhere and uh, he he bought the shirt he said uh, uh, this is a nice place you want to get the shirt and uh, i said yeah it looks good i saw some stuff that he had and i said yeah just call me later on so he video called me in the evening and uh, i looked at the video i said okay fine this is the shirt i want and uh, he buys it okay for me and um so yeah th- he he buys the shirt and uh, in the morning i was just chatting with him and uh, suddenly i remember i said hey i forgot to transfer in the money because i asked him to get it for me <clears throat> so i immediately i just uh, transferred uh, the money for the shirt and he messaged me saying that hey sunny saying that was a gift okay that was a gift from me and uh, i remember i said you know you've given me too many gifts like no i wanted this so uh, i it's not a gift and um, something that the father just spoke to me and out there was you know there's going to be a time that you're going to be just so overwhelmed with gifts of the father uh, i don't i don't mean from people like okay? i don't mean like rishi's <laughs> okay so understand what i'm saying uh, you're going to be so blessed by whatever the father is giving in your life and don't ever hold back and don't be like oh no i don't want to take a gift no receive everything that the father has to offer for you okay so even as we're talking about righteousness and we're talking about the inheritance of righteousness uh you are righteous right so you inherit what life everything that we are going to i'm going to uh speak on a little bit of the stuff from the old the promises of the old um so just understand when these promises were given um they were given they were also come with blessings and curses but you understand i i know you understand uh from from this side of the cross okay i know you are here so when you see the promises of god uh in the word through the old testament you know that everything of the promises apply for you nothing about the curses anything applies to you because your bloodline has changed your father um is now your new bloodline so nothing of your um ancestors your ancestral your ancestral line starts here now okay so no more are you going to be talking about your old ancestors this one had this problem uh this one had uh, sickness cancer lack all all the business is always failing no your ancestors now start here your father so everything about him is everything that will uh, that you will now inherit okay <clears throat> so um so yeah even as i go through some of the stuff through the old there are i i recently found out close to around 7000 promises okay in the word i won't be doing all 7000 uh but um uh, just a few and uh, just see the life that that's going to come to you okay so i'll start with 2 corinthians 120 no matter how many promises god has made they are yes in christ and through him the amen is spoken by us all promises <clears throat> that have was given for you they are in christ and they are amen 
you are in Christ. So know that everything that I'm about to share right now, all these promises that we're going to go through, they are already yours. You're not trying to go out and try to fight and earn these promises. You'll understand even as we go how these promises come to you and uh, how it's just about a rest. And uh, let's read. So Deuteronomy 28. Um, I've been told I speak very fast. But no, I know you can understanding and you will hear everything perfectly. Uh, so Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 28, this is uh, some of the blessings that <coughs> the Lord spoke to Moses. Okay, and, uh, and Moses penned them down. Um, now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord, your God, and observe carefully all his commands which I commanded you today, that the Lord your God shall set high above uh, all nations of the earth, all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord. Uh, now notice, it starts off by saying, okay, if you do diligently follow all of this and etc, 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 then you shall receive these promises. Then all of this shall come before you. But we read earlier uh, in Proverbs, that the reason you receive the promises, the reason you receive your inheritance is because you have knowledge of truth. Okay, so if you don't have the knowledge of the truth, you won't receive. So um, in, in James 1, 8, okay, it says, you do not receive because you are double-minded. So when you ask, you don't receive because when you ask, you, you ask with a double-minded, your, your one side, you're believing on the righteousness of God. But the second, you're also, you're also talking like everybody else in this world right now. So you're double-minded. And the Bible says in 1 James 8, he says, let not this man think that he shall expect anything from God, okay? Rece or rather, let not this man think that he shall receive anything. He doesn't say that let not this man think that the Father will not give him, okay? The Father has given you all this. So the promises, if you're in Christ Jesus, you're standing here, this side of the cross. So all the promises are, are for you, okay? The only reason you get, the, the only reason you will receive those promises is if you are single-minded about where you stand, okay? That's the reason why you will receive it, not because um, of anything else. So you may be in the truth, you may be speaking sonship, you may be talking all the right words, but you receive. Again, it's not the Father that's giving you, you've already given you everything, but you receive it only when you know that you are single-minded about who you are, you know the truth, you have knowledge of where you're standing, and that's the only reason you can ask boldly and receive everything that the Father is giving, okay? So, uh, let's see what it says in verse 3 in Deuteronomy 28. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in your country. Uh, I know a lot of Indians are looking to migrate out of this country, okay? Whatever, they, they, they dislike the government, etc. Uh, a lot of people, uh, and I know, okay, fine, you, you watch the news, you hear all these uh, things that are going on, you feel like, oh, maybe this is a better life somewhere else. <clears throat> maybe, but what does it say here? Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. So it doesn't matter what's going on outside. It doesn't matter uh, all the rights that are taking place. You shall be blessed in this country that you live in, and you shall be blessed in the city that you are. Okay? Uh, you know, we are ambassadors of Christ Jesus. Okay? We are, uh, the, the word says, you know, the kingdom of God is at hand. You are on this side of the kingdom. So we are in this world, but not of this world. So a quick example. How, imagine if you are an ambassador in India, okay? Or let's say, I'll, I won't take India, I'll take another country. Okay, you're an ambassador, let's say in some poor third world country, maybe in Africa, okay? But you are an ambassador from a very good country and you're there. <clears throat> now, it doesn't matter wh how that country is functioning. That country may be going through the, the worst poverty crisis ever. There may be, you're in your consulate there and there will be people, you know, you can see from your window far above, you can see people wa walking with their cans of water, trying, walking huge distances to get water, uh, food, standing in lines, riots going on all around. But <clears throat> your supply is from your country, the kingdom that you belong to. So it doesn't matter where you are, your country will send a helicopter every day with fresh drinking water, tissue paper, toilet roll, any of that stuff, just so that you can have a comfortable lifestyle. Okay, so your supply uh, doesn't matter what the situation looks around you, okay? Because you, the word says, you shall be blessed in the city and blessed in the country, okay? Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of the ground, 
uh, and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. You don't have cattle and livestock now, but all your possessions, all your, you do? There was a joke, uh, we were thinking one day, maybe because we have our logo as the lion. This is just a joke, okay? Just, uh, we were thinking maybe we should get a pet lion. <laughs> but we don't know where to keep the lion then. So, huh? Oh yeah, there was a there was an article somewhere that you know you can now adopt a line. Okay, I don't know if you've come across it. Uh, there was like this article you can adopt a line for I don't know I think five lakhs or something. So we were thinking maybe we can adopt a line and keep it somewhere here in the zoo. Sorry, imagine going standing taking photographs with a line. Okay, uh, so yeah, uh, so blessed shall be your cattle, blessed all your all your belongings, all your possessions, everything will multiply. It's going to be blessed. Okay, blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. The basket means whatever you, uh, you gather, all your food, your supplies, everything, uh, it will always be blessed. Okay, blessed shall be you be when you come in, blessed shall you be when you go out. Um, I remember some people, um, this is, okay, I'm not gonna mention, but there was a time where I remember I was at these, you know, these kind of group meetings a long back, okay? And I remember this one lady, she would always, um, Whenever a son would go out for some foreign trip, she would make a prayer request. Hey, let's just uh, lift him up in prayer. He's going out. And I used to think to myself, what are you praying for? I mean, he's just going, he's just going for a trip. Like she said, let's just pray for him for God's protection. Uh, you don't need to pray for God's protection over your life. Okay, you are protected irrespective. You shall be blessed when you go in. You shall be blessed when you're coming out. Okay, so we are not that those people, uh, I'm not, I'm not uh, you know, demeaning them. But you know what I'm saying, okay? You are from, you're not from beneath, you're from above. Okay, so we don't go asking God to protect us, uh, protect our coming and going. You are already protected, okay? You just walk in that, that divine protection and walk as a king, okay? Uh, the Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. Uh, they, shall come, we, they shall come against you in one way and flee seven. Okay, I know people have come against you in the past and uh, you've had things come against you and you were like, okay, um, how do you handle this situation? This is a promise. Like I said earlier, uh, you're not going to run after this promise. You don't have to quote this promise. It's not something you need, need to read every day of your life just to remind yourself. Remind yourself you're here, okay, of the truth that you are the righteousness of God. All these things will come to you, not because you quote it, but because it's who you are. And just be single-minded about that. And so people who come against you, they'll come to you against you in one way, but they will flee in seven different directions. I like that. The Lord will command a blessing on you, on your storehouses, in all which you have set your hand. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord God is giving you. So these hands, look at your hands. Have a look at them. And say, these hands are blessed. Whatever I touch will prosper. Whatever I touch turns to gold. You know what I mean by gold, okay? So, okay, uh, verse 9. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself, just as he has sworn to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his way. Number 10. Then all the people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. There's something called the fear of the Lord. You've heard it, we've spoken before. Uh, the fear of the Lord is, uh, is not to be afraid of God, okay? It's not, that's not what it means. But the fear of the Lord is to love righteousness and hate wickedness, okay? When you walk into places, okay, people are going to, it's not because of what you do, but you're going to carry a fear of the Lord where people who, uh, who are plotting against you will automatically just, you know, back away, back off, because they will see the fear of the Lord and they will, they will be afraid, Okay, because your righteousness, okay? Righteousness is, is um, I want you to see this picture. Righteousness doesn't mean like a holy person sitting in one place. Righteousness is, is fearful, okay? Uh, people who are not in righteousness, people who are um, not of this world, if they see a righteous person, they will be shit scared, be afraid, very afraid, okay? Uh, and uh, so don't, I want you to understand, I want you to get this picture of righteousness and not just uh, a righteous, righteousness that, you know, uh, holy, white, and that's it. E 11, did I say 11? No, 11. And the Lord will grant you plenty of goods in the fruit of your body 
uh, in the increase of your livestock and in the produce of your ground, in the land which the Lord swore your, to your fathers to give you. All that you touch, all, all your inheritance, all your possessions will keep multiplying and multiplying. You just need to rest because this is a promise. It will come to pass. Okay? Uh, number 12. The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens. His good treasure, the heavens, to give you rain uh, to your land in season and to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall borrow from none. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. That is your position. You will give freely and uh, not expect anything in return. The Father is your provider. He will give you all things and he's the one who's going to bless you. Um, verse 13. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath. If you heed to the commandments of the Lord, your God, etc., etc. Verse 14. Um, you shall not turn aside from the words that I, which I command you to the right or to the left. Uh, basically, don't turn aside from your righteousness. Okay? Uh, like I said before, some of these the promises that were given were just with a condition. Okay? If you do this, uh, but now in the new covenant, all these promises are already yours. It's already available for you. You walk into this. Uh, okay? Deuteronomy 30, 19, it says, um, I call heaven and earth as witness against you today. See, I've said before you life and death, blessings and curses, cursing. Therefore, choose life. He's giving you a choice. He's saying, this is what I've put before you. I've, uh, I've only, so today I just only uh, went through just the blessing part of it. There's also the curses. He says, okay, and this is what he was saying to the, um, the people then. He says, I've given you, this is the, uh, the, the agenda, okay? Blessings, curses, life and death. But in case you're wondering which one to choose, choose life. Okay, he's giving you the choice to even uh, to, to freely choose, but he's giving you the option, hey, and give, suggesting you choose life. Okay, 1 Kings 8, 56, okay. Blessed be the Lord who has given rest to his people Israel according to all that he has promised. There has not failed one word of all his good promises. Heard? There has not failed one word of all his good promises. That means, as the Lord speaks, that everything shall come to pass. Okay, he, uh, he is not a man that he shall lie. Uh, the, what he speaks shall come to pass. Now, um, yeah, you may, you may have had situations in your life where you're wondering, okay, um, maybe in the past, okay, you've gone through all these blessings and said, you know, quoting all these scriptures, trying to work, uh, see these blessings come to life in your past. You may have had instances of good report, and maybe not as well. Okay, um, I, would, I would just say that don't go by your experiences. Okay, whatever you've happened in the past, forget what hap what's happened in the past. This is your in inheritance, okay? It's a promise, it's a given to you. He says all the promises of, of God uh, are yes and amen. And he says that all the, none of them has failed. None of them has failed, not one word, amen? Jeremiah 29, 11. Uh, if you're wondering what the Father thinks about you or what his plans for your life are, right here. Father says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. They are thoughts of peace, not of evil, and to give you a future and a hope. Father wants to give you a hope and a future. Okay, so if ever you're in doubt and, you, uh, and you're wondering, okay, I don't know where my life is going, just even if you don't have a clear direction, okay, um, just know that whatever, the, whatever you're going to be led to, it's going to be a future and it's going to be an expected end and it's a hope. It's a good hope because that's the, that's, the, that's the thoughts that the Father thinks towards you. Thoughts of peace, not of evil. Amen. Joshua 24, 13. Um, this is lovely. Okay. Are, are you got this here? Okay. Uh, I want you to all read this together with me, okay? Just Joshua 24, 13. Okay. One, two, three. I have given you a land for which you did not labor, and cities which you did not build, and you will dwell in them, you and eat of the vineyards and olive groves which you did not plant. That is for you. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna uh, live in cities that you did not build, live in houses that you did not labor for. Others are gonna labor, and you're just gonna walk into it. Gitu's clear example uh, of her uh, the, the new the new office that she walked into. Somebody else did all the work for her. 
uh, all the furnishings, everything was ready. It was a finished work. She just walked into it and just took the fruits of what was left. And 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 the, and you can see the testimony and the, uh, blessings over blessings over blessings uh, just in her life and uh, just to the point where you know it's just uh, not you can't keep you can't count of, you, you can't you lose track of that. And uh, so this is a clear example, live example out here. And this is for your possession. This is your promise as well. This is what you're going to walk into. You're going to eat out of somebody else's labor, out of somebody else's toil. No more are you going to be doing the hard work. No more are you going to be struggling uh, because that's not your portion. Your portion is here. Your portion is the place of rest. And you just, all these promises are not supposed to be pursued. They will follow after you. Amen. Isaiah 58. Okay, I'm not going to go through this. 54, sorry. Because uh, that's the reason why I asked you to, stay, I asked you to take it. You did? Okay. Isaiah 54. Sing, barren woman, you who never bore a child, burst into song, shout for joy, uh, you who were never in labor, because more are the children of the desolate woman than, the, than of those, than of her who has a husband, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent, stretch your tent curtains wide, do not hold back, lengthen your cords, strengthen your stakes. For you will spread out into the right and into the left. Our descendants will dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities. Do not be afraid. You will not be put to shame. Do not fear. Do not fear disgrace. You will not be humiliated. You will forget the shame of your youth and remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. Okay. Uh, what does it say here? He says, do not be afraid. You will not be put to shame. And uh, do not fear disgrace, you will not be humiliated. Okay? Uh, very recently, so I've been, I, I, uh, in my new office, I've been making n number of blunders, okay, here and there. And this is not just one time. And the funny thing is, okay, um, these are not mistakes I would normally make, okay? I mean, when I was here, and in, as Adam, in the Adam generation, I would never make these mistakes ever. Okay, and uh, this is something like so, like very basic, nothing that you have to use your head for, but like there were some things that were just, and uh, always these thoughts would start coming to my mind, like heaven, what's going on? Like you're in Christ Jesus, you're in Christ Jesus, this can't be happening, okay? And, and, and these thoughts are going to come to you and say that, you know, heaven, one after the other. But here's the, here's the <clears throat> my boss I've mentioned before, he's a bit off in his head, okay? Uh, okay, fine. <clears throat> but... Um, because, yeah, um, he's, he's a bit, uh, little bit of a drama queen, overreacts, and uh, anyways, a lot of people are afraid of him. All the other managers, they just, um, they try to avoid him. But me, um, I know that the righteous are as bold as a lion. I know that I've, that I've, that I've made mistakes and I go up, but <clears throat> each time I've made a mistake in the past, okay, so I just have to tell myself, Hebron, you're dead, you can't be making mistakes. Even if you have, even if you have, remember how many things Abraham did, okay? I am the righteousness of God and everything will work for me because I am the righteousness of God. So um, many times that the mistakes have happened and uh, I've gone before him, he's gotten a little upset, but like immediately later on his mood has changed and he's like, you know, back to normal and things have just worked out. And it, it's come to the point where a lot of all my other colleagues, they're like, what is it about you that he sees? Uh, this is seriously what I've been told all the time. They're like, uh, he makes the mistake, it comes on us. <laughs> I'm, I'm, um, it, it keeps falling back on them. And they say that, what is it about you that he just likes you? Like, you know, for you, he doesn't say anything. For, for all of us, like, you know, we, the small things we do. Um, and I've made worse mistakes, okay, that, uh, than them. But for me, I just get like, you know, like a light treatment here and there. And so just what happens... So, you will not be put to shame. You will not be humiliated. Um, so what happens, let's say, if, okay, in a situation, um, you do get humiliated, okay? Let's say the boss had uh, reprimanded me in front of somebody, in front of the entire office. It was a humiliating situation, if it happens. He hasn't done it so far. Even if, even if it does, I don't care. You know why? Because uh, signs follow me, okay? I don't pursue this. And my, my, my rest is knowing that I'm already here. So I'm saying this because you may, you may uh, also go through something like this and you think like, oh, but wait, if I'm the righteousness of God, 
Why am I going through this? Why is this happening to me? And um, and if if I do come in a situation, I just remember one thing. You know, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to change who I am. I'm not going to change my mind. I'm not going to switch my my thought, change my pattern. Oh, now what's going on? Heaven, I need to fast. Heaven, I need to spend more time with God. Heaven, I need to. You know what? It, you know what I'm saying? These things that will uh, make you think, oh, maybe I did this. Maybe I didn't. Uh, I didn't give that beggar money when he would ask for me, and I felt I knew the father was saying that give, 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 give. But I just decided to walk away. And now look at where I'm at. Okay, no. Um, you stay where you are, you stay your position, and everything, even if it does have, has to happen, okay? You stay and stand your ground, and everything will turn out for your good, okay? And this is a promise, this is a truth. The next time, nothing of, none of this will ever happen. And even if it deep, keeps coming and coming and coming, and uh, again, the same things start cropping up, uh, you don't move from your position, you stay where you are, okay? That's where you are, you're grounded, stay here, in a place of rest, knowing you are the righteousness of God, all these things will come uh, after you because it is, they run after you, right? The promises run after you. Just stand here, be single-minded about who you are. And uh, so just uh, on that note, just yesterday, before yesterday, okay, something happened again. There was this huge payment that had to go through and it had to go through on the 20th, okay? And uh, the day before, two days back, my boss said, why don't you just check the bank to see if the bank account is fine or not? Okay, but he asked me to check it for a different reason altogether, and I was like, no, I didn't bother. Okay, I should have checked, like I said, I should have, but I didn't do it. Okay, I made a mistake, I messed up, and there's like some about five CR that had to be transferred uh, on that day itself. Uh, in the morning of that day, actually, this is the best part. Okay, so on the night before, I don't know why I was just thinking I'll probably just go home. I said, like, let me just stand here and just check this out. Okay, so I opened the bank and I saw, uh, apparently they had frozen our account, okay? They froze the account for some sort of KYC nonsense, but it, it would take a long time to lift the freeze because the people, the authorized signatories weren't even around, even the next day. And um, so I was like, okay, and this is, uh, I like that the father kept me prepared for this the night before. So uh, I didn't come on the day of the 20th and wake up with this. He, uh, I heard the spirit just say, just sit, decide, sit down and just, Make the payment now, just go ahead. Why do wait for another day? And I saw it and then I was like, oh, you know, all these thoughts were coming in my mind. And I just remembered that uh, this one truth that <clears throat> Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. I'm not believing God for something. I already believed God when I gave my life to him. Okay, and the moment I did that, I became the righteousness of God and all my mistakes are under the blood. Okay, all my mistakes are under the blood and covered. So, there were thoughts going in my mind like, hey, this is a matter for your job because this is huge, okay, if this doesn't happen. And I just remembered, um, because I've shared this testimony and I've heard people say, hey, wow, great testimony. Um, I, I decided, you know, it doesn't matter if I have to lose the job because my identity is not this job. My father is rich, okay, he is rich. I lose something, something else better comes along the way. And I just, I just decided that, you know, it doesn't matter. I will choose to rest in that side of the truth, okay? And uh, lo and behold, finally I was waiting at this bank till six o'clock in the evening, and they finally got it done. They lifted the freeze, and uh, we managed to make the payment. Everything was done. I went back to the office. The boss was smiling from left to right, and extremely happy. And again, I could just see that uh, he was firing somebody else, <laughs> not me. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Okay, I don't know what, what's what's happening. But anyways, I just uh, what I, all I see is that I just I you make mistakes, but you're still favored. Okay, um, I'm gonna just skip from this now. Um, verse 13: All your children will be taught by the Lord. Great will be their peace. We have seen that in Gitu's life. In righteousness, you will be established, and you will have nothing to fear. Terror will be removed. It will not come near you. Okay. Um, Isaiah 61, seven, go down, yeah. Instead of your shame, you will receive a double portion and instead of your disgrace, you will rejoice in your inheritance. And so you will inherit a double portion in your land and everlasting joy will be yours. Abraham messed up, um, he goes back rich. He didn't just get his wife back, okay? He messed up, he sent his wife along. He didn't, he didn't, you know, Pharaoh and even uh, King Abimelech, they didn't send him back, okay, take your wife. 
They give him cattle, livestock, everything. Go, take that and go. Okay, so he ends. He messes up, and he. It's like it's like what happened. Okay, I messed up. Somebody else gets reprimanded. Okay, um, and I get rich. Okay, um, Galatians four. Okay, I'm going to end here. No, no, just uh, almost done. So all these things we just spoke about. Okay, all uh, the inheritance of righteousness. We've covered, she's covered it, I've covered it. We're talking about all these promises, they're yours. They are your inheritance, you inherit them. Uh, you don't do anything, um, I mean, you inherit it because by, by blood, right? So, but let's see what it says here. As long as an heir is under age, he is no different from a slave. Although he owns the whole estate, the heir is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by his father. So you may be an heir of all these promises, okay, of all the blessings of the Father, okay, but if you're still like a child, okay, if you're still like a child, if you are still a child in the sense that uh, your still mindset is still here, although you own the whole estate, okay, you are still like a slave because until you reach the age of maturity, until you cross 18 years old, that's when you legally become you know, an heir of all of this, and it's given unto you. So they're given to tutors, they're given to trustees, guardians to hold that for you until you receive. As you're growing into sonship, even as you're maturing, hearing the word, hearing the word, uh, you're maturing to more and more of this truth. And uh, the father is, he wants to give you all these things, okay? Uh, but he will, he will see how faithful you are in the little things. Be faithful in the little things, and much more, much, much more will be added unto you all your inheritance, because he wants you to govern. He wants you to govern, and uh, he wants to give you all of this. So just grow up in this. Uh, just uh, be faithful with the small things in your life, and much, much more will be added unto you. Uh, Philippians 2, 5, 6, okay? This is not actually part of um, what I wanted to share, but I just thought I'll just share this. Uh, Philippians 2, 5, 6, he says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He says, let this mind, which, is, which was in Christ Jesus, who, what mind? The mind of Christ, that the mindset where Christ says that he saw himself as equal to God, where Christ saw himself as equal to God. He says that mind, that mindset, that mind, that God saw himself as equal to God and doesn't consider as robbery, let that mind be in you. You have that same mindset in you to see that you are also exactly like your father. Okay, let that mind be in you. Uh, that was the mind of Christ. Amen. So I will leave you with that uh, this morning. And uh, just remember, single-minded of who you are, and uh, all your inheritance comes chasing after you. Amen. How many enjoyed that word? Uh, just to go back on what Hebron said on Galatians 4, I just want to read the whole scripture there. Uh, can someone open Galatians 4? Galatians 4. Can we have it up? So all the I am's, all, uh, the, the scripture of Galatians 4. Galatians 4. Just put that up. You know, all the I am's that we do, on Wednesday Bible study, they're also your inheritance. I told you, like Hebron was saying, if there are 7,000, I didn't even know. But look at the inheritance, okay? But where you can put all of that in one is, I am life. In life, there is no death, okay? And you can just rest in that. All the promises that we took, where you're blessed, you're going out, coming in, yes, all of that, because I am life. So wherever I go, it's life, there's no death. All my mistakes, if I messed it up, because I'm life, all my mistakes will turn into life. And this life has a father, is so fathered. Our whole life is so fathered. It's such a rest, okay? You, do we have Galatians 4? That's not Galatians 4. No, I want it from the, from the scriptures, yeah. Can someone read Galatians 4? Can someone read? So it talks about the slave and a tutor. Uh, it talks about how the law was a tutor. You know, you only tell children, don't play with knives. Is your mother telling grown-up, 
maybe some to some they are yeah you're a 60 year old guy at home and is your mom coming and saying son don't play with the knife is she some are questioning <laughs> huh you tell children don't play with knives right yeah so the, it says that the law was a tutor like you know all the rules and all to keep them like this uh, until christ came and then when christ comes you're in the fullness and now you're in this side of the cross i can't find galatians in my book hold on after 2 corinthians thank you joel i got it now i say that an heir that is you and me as long as he is a child you can be here child does not does not differ at all from a slave though he is master of all okay but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the father even so we when we were children were in bondage under the elements of the world it talks about if you're an adam you were like a child okay under the bondage of the elements of the world but when the fullness of time had come god sent forth his son born of a woman born under the law to redeem those who were under the law that we might receive the adoption as sons and because you are sons god has sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts crying out one word what is the one word that you can go to sleep in i'm so fathered okay you're so fathered therefore you are no longer a slave but a son and if a son then an heir of your father through christ so the law kept us it was like guardians and stewards just keeping in in till christ came and now once you have christ in you now your son but our whole minds have been in slave mindset for so long and so now we are coming into the mind of the sun single mindedness about who you are so you can go to sleep when thoughts come just know thank god my sonship is by birth i'm not trying to be one i don't have to quote scriptures i'm born a son when you walk out i'm born this is i'm who i am so just be just be stop trying to become something you already are so when you're walking out sun is walking out god is walking out new creation is walking out when you're praying new creation is praying christ is praying to the father the father always listens to christ's prayer yesterday when i was sitting on my bed i changed the way i was praying chani i saw myself as christ because of the new creation what he had shown me in my dream so i was like the sunday everything changed because then if i'm asking then i receive <laughs> because if the sun asks he receives all things it became a rest before i used to pray like you know you can think like priya is praying then you have the beg begging prayers and then suddenly you see as jesus is praying to the father <laughs> you're one with him right you're in christ new creation then everything changes then it becomes more of like father son there's only one son and we're all in him <laughs> that's why oneness okay body all the i ams are your inheritance okay so rest in it enjoy next week we are going to have a q and a q and a about this whole month about righteousness so if you have any questions write to me or send it to rishi and he will give it to us write all your questions down okay and we're going to take them and the next uh, month we're going to start with another series it's going to be awesome uh, i'll share more later i don't know if i already shared it in the sermon did i did i give it away no okay excitement okay it's going to be again uh with the sls format so how many enjoyed you received i received a lot also from what heaven said so let's give a spiritual tithe stand up just say father i'm a son in your kingdom jesus you're my high priest and right now i give you a tithe a thanksgiving of all the increase and life that came to my soul to my understanding and now just worship him thank him for everything that you heard that all the life that came so raha dari arara ba shik raha dara thank you jesus thank you father that we're not doing anything to become we rest that we are 
Father. We are born this. We are born new creation. Born one. Stora And our whole life is fathered, so we can rest. Show Brahadariyararapa. Amen. You know, before I close, I just want to say this. Jesus only had one word on his mouth. Father. And that's why it says, our spirit bear witness and we cry out, Father. So he, in all things, he said, you will all leave me, but I am not alone. I am fathered. Fathered life. And that's your word.